Good morning and a warm welcome to your show, Sunny Mornings in San Diego. I'm your host, Melissa, and it's Wednesday, March 27th. Coming up on today's show, we'll get into the surf report and the weather outlook. Then we'll jump into some local news and a few interesting happenings in business, tech, and entertainment. But first, you'll be interested to know, 2,071 years ago, today in 47 BC, amidst the power struggle in Rome between Julius Caesar and Pompey, also known as Pompey the Great, Cleopatra saw an opportunity to solidify her reign. Following Pompey's assassination in Egypt, Caesar arrived in Alexandria, leading to a romantic and political alliance between him and Cleopatra. This partnership resulted in Cleopatra's reinstatement as Queen of Egypt in 47 BC, after she had been exiled by her brother Ptolemy. Supported by Roman military might, Cleopatra's reascension to the throne not only highlighted her strategic acumen, but also marked the beginning of a significant era of prosperity and peace under her rule. So now you know. And now you know what time it is. It's time for the surf report. Starting Wednesday and extending into the weekend, anticipate a blend of mid to short period northwest swell with some new long period west northwest swell contributions. Conditions are expected to favor waist to chest high waves at prime spots with overall surf quality potentially enhanced by lighter morning wind. The outlook for the weekend suggests the arrival of a more pronounced west-northwest swell, leading to widespread waste to chest-high surf, with standout locations possibly experiencing head-high plus. However, we should be prepared for variable wind conditions that could impact surf quality. Wednesday at Tourmaline and South San Diego, it's looking good and clean at three to four feet until noon. Then the wind and rough stuff rolls in. Best time to ride is at 9 a.m. with a two and a half foot incoming tide when the north northeast swell is two feet at 18 seconds and the offshore wind is two mile per hour. The first high tide Wednesday will be four feet at 11 a.m. with a one foot low tide at 4.30. The near shore buoy at Scripps in La Jolla reads 60 degrees for the water temperature. Checking out the weather in the San Diego area. This morning, it's partly cloudy and feels like 52 degrees with two mile per hour wind. The sunset will take place at 7.05 and it will rise again tomorrow at 6.41. It looks like we're in for a mostly sunny day with a high near 66 and wind of five to 10 mile per hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy with a low around 51. Looking ahead in the weather. Thursday offers partly sunny weather, highs at 66 degrees and brisk northwest wind. Nighttime cools to 52 under clouds. Friday sees a high of 65, becoming sunnier, with a slight chance of rain at night with a low of 54. The weekend brings variable clouds, occasional rain, highs around 66, and nighttime lows in the low 50s. Bonjour, food enthusiasts. This podcast is brought to you by Versailles Cafe and Pastries in Encinitas. Nestled on El Camino Real South, just north of Encinitas Boulevard, this cafe is a haven for culinary delights. Indulge in their amazing Eggs Benedict or their gluten-free crepes. You can grab a panini for lunch or just breeze on through to get your morning coffee. They are open every day from eight to five. So stop on by and don't forget to tell them, Sunny Morning send you. In local news, on April 8th, San Diego will experience a partial solar eclipse. To safely view this celestial event, specialized glasses are essential since looking directly at the sun can harm your eyes. Free solar eclipse glasses are available at select locations, including the Fleet Science Center and San Diego Public Libraries. The Fleet Science Center is hosting a viewing party in Balboa Park 
offering not only free classes, but also educational activities and a chance to experience the eclipse through a live feed. San Diego's public libraries are distributing glasses with a limit of two per household and hosting eclipse-themed events. If unable to secure free glasses, building a pinhole projector or purchasing compliant glasses are recommended alternatives. Now on to sports. The NFL is introducing a significant change to kickoffs to enhance safety and increase the number of returns. This new approach involves positioning the majority of players downfield before the kick, aiming to reduce high-speed collisions. Kickers will kick off from their 35-yard line with their teammates at the receiving team's 40-yard line and most of the return team between their 35 and 30-yard lines. This setup is expected to lower injury rates and make the play safer, while aiming to double the return rate from 21% in 2023 to between 50% and 60% in 2024. The change, seen as one of the most significant since the introduction of replay review, will be tested as a one-year experiment. Sounds kinda crazy to me. Last night in local sports, the Lakers at home beat the Bucks 128 to 124. And the Ducks at home lost to the Kraken 4 to 0. Tonight, the Lakers are on the road in Memphis to take on the Grizzlies. And the Clippers are on the road in Philadelphia to take on the 76ers. In talk news, the collapse of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge has spotlighted the urgent need for infrastructure attention in the U.S. Despite no signs of negligence, this incident underlines a broader national crisis of aging and underfunded infrastructure. With nearly 10% of the country's 617,000 bridges significantly compromised and countless other critical structures in dire condition, the incident in Baltimore could force a more focused federal response. President Biden has committed to rebuilding the key bridge, but many other structures lack similar commitments. The bipartisan infrastructure law of 2021 provides $1.2 trillion over five years, the largest investment in U.S. infrastructure history. Yet experts warn, this may only be a temporary fix without sustained funding and maintenance efforts. In business news, Visa and MasterCard's agreement to lower swipe fees by an average of 0.07% over the next five years, following a nearly two-decade court battle, could have significant implications for credit card rewards. Swipe fees, which can range up to 4% for premium cards, fund various cardholder benefits, including cash back, travel points, and shopping perks. With the reduction in these fees, there might be concerns about the sustainability of these rewards. However, the Electronic Payments Coalition has applauded the settlement, indicating it could prevent the need for the proposed Credit Card Competition Act, which might have negatively impacted consumers and rewards programs. Despite the potential for reduced rewards, this agreement is seen as a positive development for reducing business costs and maintaining consumer benefits. In crypto movement, Bitcoin is at $70,000. Ethereum is at $3,500. And Solana is nearing $188. Moving on to a more local vibe. In our community spotlight on health and wellness, we are working with a national Pilates studio to bring you some free classes, so listen up. Check out Club Pilates with several locations in the San Diego area. Pilates presents a comprehensive wellness approach, cultivating strength, reducing tension, and elevating mental well-being. Scientific research affirms its benefits. So now you can check out Club Pilates for a free class with locations in Encinitas, Solana Beach, Oceanside, 
La Jolla, and more. Just be sure to tell them Sunny Morning sent you by. And now, back to the show. Let's talk tech. A groundbreaking discovery has unveiled a new chapter in the storied history of William Shakespeare, revealing his younger sister, Joan Shakespeare Hart, as the true author of a long misunderstood family document. This revelation challenges the long-held belief that the document, found in 1757, and believed to be penned by their father, John Shakespeare, signifies a dramatic shift in the understanding of the Shakespeare family's religious affiliations. Joan, a figure previously shadowed by her illustrious brother, emerges as a secret Catholic sympathizer in Protestant England. This finding not only sheds light on the secretive nature of the Shakespeare family, but also underscores the evolving methodologies in historical research, leveraging digital archives to solve mysteries that have puzzled scholars for centuries. And in entertainment news, Steve Martin's multifaceted career and personal journey are captured in a unique documentary by Morgan Neville titled Steve, a documentary in two pieces. The film premiering on Apple TV Plus delves into Martin's life, showcasing his evolution from a Disneyland performer and stand-up comedian to a movie star, banjo player, father, and comedy duo with Martin Short. Through reflections and archival footage, the documentary attempts to synthesize the various stages of Martin's life, highlighting his impact on comedy and his personal growth. Despite his critical view of his earlier work, Martin acknowledges the joy in his current endeavors, especially his comedic partnership with Short. Now content and considering himself at his best, Martin reflects on a life that seems almost in reverse, marked by a late-stage tranquility and happiness he hadn't anticipated. Well, all righty, folks, it's time for the quote of the day. And today, our quote comes from William Shakespeare. The great poet said, Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. And that's a wrap for this morning. Remember to stay tuned tomorrow for more news and updates. Have an amazing day, my good friends. Okay.